While we're here at Snipey's place and we're going to do a switchboard upgrade. The fuse on the street's about to be pulled and as you can see there's no isolation here. So we're going to put an isolation switch here so that you can always isolate the switchboard when you need to work on it if you want to. Another reason we're doing that is Coochman's used to do the meter upgrades and they're qualified electricians and they were allowed to pull the fuse at the street and now Wells has the contract for the meters. They're not qualified electricians, they are just trained to change the meters, so they require you to have an isolation switch here for meter changes. So it's just an upgrade we're having to do on all of the meter boards, so we'll do it here as well. Okay, so we've got that switch on now, so we have now isolated um, the rest of the house. For those of you who have not seen in a meter, this is their little antenna, and in this little area here, they have the little Wi-Fi modem, so they can read your power usage from um, their office, I guess. So yeah, just put that back together, and then we'll go start on the switchboard. So a couple reasons that we're upgrading the switchboard. Um, one of the main ones is both of these RCDs, when you press the test button, they take a very long time to trip. So they're no longer up to one of the test standards. Also, the switchboard is full and they're adding a bunch of new stuff, doing a new kitchen, so we're going to extend it with a 40-way Vinco board. So I've just chucked a wire through the main switch so you can't turn it on. We're the only ones home, but you know, better safe than sorry. This video is going to have a bit of information in it. This here is a ripple control, so this controls your hot water and most houses will have them in them. Uh, we start to take them out when we put a hot water diverter in for solar. But what this device does is it turns your hot water cylinder on and off and the power company controls that. The reason that they control it is when everybody gets home at night, everybody turns all of their appliances on and it puts quite a lot of stress on the electrical grid. So they can use these ripple controls to turn off your hot water cylinder and when they turn the hot water cylinder off, it just alleviates some of that stress on the system. So if you ever wondered what that's for, that's what it does. Now Snipey's just double checking that everything's dead. It should be, but oh, test proof test. What we'll do here is we'll label all the breakers, all the wires out of the breakers as to what they are, so we can put them into their new breakers. Then we'll rip the board apart, make a bigger hole, put the new board in, put all the wires into the right spots. In the labelling process, we've got the hot water, the AC and the oven. And the rest of the cables, so this one here, the small cables, they're all just go to either a 6 amp or a 20 amp breaker. So we don't actually need to, to label those because they are under script lights or hot water. So so long as we label the four that we do know, the rest of them just go into the right size breaker. You ain't gonna get that out with that thing, bro. Yeah, wait, mate. I'll worry about it. Well, uh, yeah, mate. Stuff. Retrofit a switchboard. You've got to take this flange off that goes around the outside of the switchboard because that would usually sit in behind the jib and against the studs. But if you take it off one piece, then you can use it as a template for your cutting hole. So we've got the switchboard out, we've cleaned the hole out, we've got the bat out from up there. Um, we'll cut this hole and then we'll feed our cables into the new switchboard and start fitting off the breakers. All right, so we've got the new switchboard in and now we're just stripping the TPS, which is the white cable. Instead of at the old switchboard location, we're stripping it up to here where it enters the board. Basic insulation can't be in the roof space, so we have to stop just shy like these ones here. We'll get those stripped up, we'll make the earths off, and then we'll start making the neutrals and the lives off. We've got them all stripped up nicely to their length. Now we're just separating out the earths. We'll put all the earths into the earth bar here first. And then we will work on the neutrals and phases. See, snipey has got them all out there. We can go to cut them all to length and pop them nulls. The okay, so we have all the earths terminated. Now we're going to do the mains. So we've got the mains coming in here and the neutral coming in. The neutral will go into the neutral bar. And then we also have... Here is the wire that goes to the ripple control outside, which you call a pilot. That will go into the second pole of the main switch and will feed the hot water. Although I've just realized they've now got gas hot water, so this is um, excess to requirement. 
we'll just terminate it anyway. Okay, so we now have some comb on the top of the breakers feeding from the RCDs. We have our mains in. We have all of our cables made off into their breakers or MCBs and all of the neutrals made off into the neutral bar. We've got the RCDs fed, so this RCD and this RCD are fed from this 6mm into here or 4mm and then also we feed this RCD and this RCD on another 4mm so we're not feeding the whole board off one single 4mm. Now we need to feed the neutrals back to the neutral bar for the RCDs that will go to the bottom and then the top goes to the RCD bars. Sweet, so we smash it out, we've got our neutrals from the bottom of the RCD to the neutral bar and from the top of the RCD to the individual RCD neutral bars. Now for those of you who don't know, this is an MCB or a miniature circuit breaker and those are designed to those are designed to protect the circuit from overcurrent. This is an RCD. An RCD is designed to protect people, so it detects if there is a leakage to earth via an imbalance in the current leaving from the RCD and the current coming back through the RCD. Here we go, somebody's asking what uh, torque screwdriver I'm using. That's the one. Just because there was a special on them when we got them. Sniper's just going through and talking up all the breakers before we live on it and test. Do our couple of tests. Oh, I'm about to call the inspector to see if he can come around and have a have a young geese. Yeah, but we're pretty much all done. Okay, so we've turned it on. We're going to do a bunch of tests. We're going to test that we have power everywhere we should, which at the moment should be at the top of the main switch. So test that. Good. Yep. Yep. Two thirty-eight. Yep. Cool. Now we should have it at the at the bottom of this comb here. Check every every terminal. Yep. 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 And now we should also have it at each RCD. Yep. And the bottom RCD. Yep. Cool. Now you can flick all of the RCDs on. Just the RCDs. Yep. Now there's two ways you can test RCDs. You can go all the way through the five function tests on a multi function tester, which is half current, current, five times current, and ramp test. Or if you read the rigs, so long as it has an AC and a DC pulsating sign, the test buttons all function. And once you've pressed the test, test buttons, if you test between the poles, and they're all broken then that completes the test also so now we're just going to turn this off so we can do an ohms test and we'll change this to ohms and now you're going to need your green lead and your red lead to go from the bottom and top across the thing and it should be open cool next one open next one open cool so we are clear so that is the rcds tested if you have a look in the testing, that will suffice what it asks for. Now we're going to turn all the RCDs on. We're going to turn the mains on. We're going to turn on the oven. This one here is spare for their hob. This one here is the AC. Now we're just going to go one by one and turn them all on and make sure that no RCDs trip. When you do it one by one like this, it lets you know exactly what breaker could be wired wrong. And none of them are wrong. What could be wrong is if you had one of these neutrals in a different neutral bar, it will trip the RCD or both of the RCDs because there'll be an imbalance of current leaving and current returning. So we've done all that, um, on to our next test. So what Snipey is doing here is just going through and making sure that everything that is turned on at the moment, which is all of the house, has voltage at the bottom of the MCB, meaning that the house will be on. 
it's a worthwhile test because sometimes if you have your terminals not quite tight on the top it's easy when you put in combs like this to forget to put say this screw in because the comb will still sit there and then you have no voltage on the bottom this way you know that everything is live that should be next thing we will do is we'll run a fly lead out and we'll test the main earth it's not required because we've just done a switchboard upgrade but we'll check it anyway since we are in the midst of testing things got my fly lead attached there goes off into the house um, hopefully that's a good enough connection otherwise I'll come back and hold on to it when he does the test but we'll go inside and have a look at him doing it okay we've just turned it on to ohms and we are at 0 0.05 of an ohm and the maximum for a main earth is 0.5 of an ohm so we are well and truly below regulation so we've got the meter board all closed up just putting the switchboard labels on covers on we've had the inspection we're all done it's all working all tested I've gone through the house and um, tested the hot points they're all working and yeah Stop. we are all done Worked on. hopefully you've learned something uh, that's a switchboard upgrade pretty straightforward follow for more from NZ Trading